On today's episode, we're going to talk about language acquisition. I have studied quite a few languages over the years, and I thought I would share some of my tricks of the trade with you today. Hello again, Lieblings. I'm Madi, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. Today we're going to talk about languages. Idiomas. Sprache. In today's rapidly shrinking world, you are at an advantage if you can speak at least a second language. Or in my case, three. While I was a university student, I dabbled in German, French, and Russian, and I ultimately came out with a Spanish degree and a biology degree, but we're not here to talk about that. While learning all of these languages, I have developed tricks that have helped me. I can't guarantee that they'll help you, but maybe it could help you try to see languages in a different light and find your own tricks. But before we get started, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Here on Adventures of Lamadi, we talk about writing, living abroad, and everything in between. So the first thing to know about learning language can be best summed up in the words of science fiction writer Douglas Adams. Don't panic. Never compare yourself to others. Everyone learns languages differently, and some have it easier than others. I have said this a lot in previous videos, but I don't think people realize how much negative reinforcement can block a person's ability to better learn a language. Whether the person is comparing themselves to other people or receiving constant criticism from native speakers, I emphasize the word constant even though what constitute as constant is subjective. Whenever I'm around someone who wants to practice English with me, especially ones who have not had much experience outside of school, I don't correct their English. Only if they're really struggling will I then help. But trust me, the best way to improve quickly is by doing and not worry about whether or not your grammar is perfect in the beginning. Really, at that point, just focus on being understood. However, once we've been around each other long enough and it's clear that they feel confident about their English uh, skills, then I will gently correct them when necessary. I have an aunt who tried to speak English when she first came to the States in the 70s. Her partner used to make fun of her, ask her to repeat her mispronunciation so he could laugh at her, and was overall cruel. My aunt then decided that it wasn't worth it. She still really can't speak English. She understands it perfectly fine, and I think if she practiced more, it wouldn't be a problem, but I'm just trying to drive home how that cruelty helps no one. Now, to be clear, she has also, you know, spent a good portion of her life living in the part of the U.S. that was mostly Latino anyway, so there wasn't really a need to learn. But she had just wanted to, and having that negative reinforcement killed the desire. And I don't want anyone to feel like that, because I've seen firsthand how detrimental that is. The first time I was thrown into the deep end language-wise was when I was 13. I was sent to Peru by myself. I stayed with relatives who didn't speak a lick of English. It was really sink or swim when it came to learning Spanish, and my grammar was crap. I can tell you that. But I survived. My family supported me 100%, and even though it was so terrifying and stressful, as soon as I came back to the States, I looked forward to the next summer when I could go again. I spent quite a few summers there, and it was the best way to utilize what I had learned in Spanish class that year before. So. I learned those two most important rules. Learn by doing and don't worry about being perfect. But we have actual tricks, don't worry. <laughs> My first trick is having a notebook. I am a stationary fiend and I love having more and more of these things and reasons to have said things. So I have notebooks for several subjects and not just for languages but also for my books book ideas. And the important thing, the idea of this is just to have something in one place that's easy to reference and to carry with you. Another trick is listening to music, or if you're feeling very ambitious, musicals in the language you're trying to learn. I was in show choir once upon a time, and I can tell you that it is so much fun to listen to a favorite musical in another language. When I was visiting my family in Germany in 2007, I did a road trip with one of my aunts and my two cousins to Berlin, and we watched Die Schöne und das Biest. My German was like crap, utter crap at that point. But I knew Beauty and the Beast since it was a favorite when it came out when I was eight years old. And it really helped because I knew this, the story, I knew what was being sung, and then being able to hear the words and, and, you know, just start. Start that journey in that way. Going in the same vein, read a book you have read before in your native language. 
but in your new language. <laughs> like I said, it's a similar technique to music. Obviously in the beginning, I highly recommend you start with a children's book, not with a never ending story, by the way. <laughs> it's a children's book, but holy hell, it's big. It's never ending. See what I did there? <laughs> anyway, start with a children's book or even young adult. Um, one of the first books I actually read, like properly read in Spanish <clears throat> was Twilight. <laughs> because when I went to study abroad in Spain, that was when Twilight was at its peak popularity. So I had the trilogy with me. And while I was in Spain, I bought Crepusculo. So it helped. My next piece of advice is to watch a TV series with subtitles. First, you start it with your native language and then eventually aim towards the new language. I know a lot of immigrants in the States who actually learned and bettered their English by watching TV actually pretty much everywhere around the world <laughs> because the American TV is everywhere. In today's techie streaming world, there are subtitles for everything. You can listen to the show in its original language and have your language of subtitles, but I do recommend that as you go, eventually you should switch the subtitles to that language so you can see what they're saying and connect to how it's being pronounced. Also, it helps to have that when you have to deal with accents. My husband and I have subtitles on pretty much all the time because sometimes my husband has trouble with certain English accents. I have trouble with certain German ones, but having those subtitles really help with your reading and listening skills. My next piece of advice is finding a YouTuber who does videos in the language you want to learn. I know a lot of people watch this channel in hopes of practicing their English at least in terms of hearing skills. Because of that, I do try to slow down when I'm recording my videos. The important word is try. <laughs> I've still gotten at least one complaint about still being too fast. And just so you know, there are a lot of Americans that speak even faster than that. But whatever. We are a rather small community in terms of English speakers in Germany. So uh, yeah, we actually, we all kind of know each other. <laughs> Once you find one, it's very easy to find others, essentially is what I'm saying. My next piece of advice is if you do decide to take a course, try different ones and see the kind of learner that you are. There are plenty of expats on YouTube that will always recommend different language schools because they're usually, you know, sponsored certain episodes. And while that's great, like I said before, in other episodes, everyone learns languages differently. <laughs> I mean, I learned Spanish differently than I learned German, French and Russian. Obviously with Spanish, it was constant exposure for my mom and my countless aunts and uncles and having to learn how to read Spanish at the same time I was learning to read and write in English and then eventually going to school in, in the United States where I then had a more structured education in the language and then going to Peru in order to actually practice what I learned while with German, French and Russian, they were strictly in a school setting. I personally am someone who needs structure and I need to have someone break down the language for me. So I, I have tried Rosetta Stone and Duolingo and they help and reinforce what I have already learned, but I am someone who needs to see the patterns first. I like to see the conjugation chart and learning the actual rules for like accusative versus dative in German or preterito versus imperfecto in Spanish because through that structure, uh, by the time I was studying Russian, for example, and covering the ideas of nominative, accusative, dative, and genitive forms of a noun, I already knew that because I'd already learned it beforehand in German. So I was able to, you know, translate that. But I know not everyone learns that way. My dad, on the other hand, can literally be thrown into a country, give him enough time, and he'll pick up a lot. He has never taken a Spanish course, and yet his Spanish, when he talks to my relatives, is impressive. On the other hand, my mom and I, we're we're the like the structure type of people <laughs> very organized very structure structure but i wouldn't have known that without actually having tried these different language schools so while i in highly encourage doing something it is important to figure out what are your learning habits and the best way to figure it out is to simply try it out my last piece of advice is finding someone to practice with like I said in the beginning, learn by doing, make mistakes. Find someone who's not going to be a stickler in the beginning, unless that's what you want, naturally. But find someone and, and practice. And what about you? What tricks do you use in your language learning journey? Let me know in the comments below. And that's it.
Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know that you like this kind of content and you want to see more. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you'd like to see on this channel. If you want fun escapism, my space fantasy, The God Queen is available in ebook, paperback, and hardback. The sequel, The Last Imperator, is also available for pre-order. Don't forget to sign up for the TLI pre-sale giveaway if you have pre-ordered. If you sign up for my newsletter, you'll get the first six chapters of The God Queen, as well as the prequel short story, The Night and the Goddess. So sign up. If you've read any of my work or the work of your favorite author, please leave a review. They really help us authors out and it is free to do so. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And that's it. Until next time, adieu.